नमस्कार गुड इवनिंग व्यूअर्स यूर वॉचिंग सनसर टीवी इज लाइव ब्रॉडकास्ट एट नाइन पी एम दिस इज द न्यूज विद मी भावना नैयर ओवर द नेक्स्ट थर्टी मिनट्स वी ब्रिंग यू आर राउंड अप ऑफ ऑल नेशनल एंड इंटरनेशनल न्यूज दैट यू नीड टू नो लेट्स बिगिन विद द हेडलाइंस फर्स्ट CBSE results declare 94.4% students clear 10th standard 12th standard has a pass percentage of 92.71% Lok Sabha passes Indian Antarctic Bill Earth Minister Earth Sciences Minister Jitendra Singh replies to discussion Upper House takes a private members bill on right to health On National Flag Day Prime Minister Modi appeals to all people to display tricolor at their homes from 13th to 15th August. Union Home Minister Amit Shah urges all Indians to join Har Ghar Tiranga campaign. Dinesh Gunawardene new Prime Minister of Sri Lanka. President Vikramasinghe administers oath. 18 cabinet members sworn in. And Ajay Devgan and Suraya get National Film Award for Best Actor. Aparna Balamurli gets best actress award sura rai potru adjudged best feature film after the headlines let's launch to some more important stories of the day at 1 is to 834 india's doctor to population ratio better than who standard of 1 is to 1000 says government Lieutenant Governor V K Saxena recommends CBI probe into Delhi government's excise policy 2021-22. NSA Ajit Doval meets UK counterpart Stephen Lovegrove on taking partnership forward in line with roadmap 2030. No wheat crisis in India asserts government production in 2021-22 2.5 million tons more than average of last 5 years. Powered by merchandise and services, India clocks exports worth $676 billion in financial year 21-22, says Minister of State Anupriya Patel. Union Minister Piyush Goyal tells wide goods industry to become global champions, asserts that PLI scheme only meant to give an initial push. Decision of Constitutional Bench examining proposal to set up regional branches of Supreme Court awaited. says law and justice minister kiran rijiju kerala health minister confirms india's third monkey pox case from malappuram 35 year old patient had come from uae on 6 july akasha air opens booking for flights starting from 7th august first flight on mumbai ahmedabad route and nasa shares image of pluto showing planet in cycle delic riot of colors indicating its various region and now the top story of the day lok sabha on friday passed the indian antarctic bill 2022 which seeks to extend the application of domestic laws to research stations set up by india in the antarctic region india has two active research stations in the antarctic maitri and bharti where scientists are involved in research the bill also seeks to protect the antarctic environment and regulate activities in the region moving the bill in the lok sabha earth sciences minister jitendra singh said that the main objective of the antarctic treaty was to ensure the demilitarization of the area the antarctic treaty was signed in 1959 and india became a signatory in 1983 sambandhit teen treatyan hain ek to yahi treaty hai jiske tahat hum ye bill la rahe hain dusra convention of antarctica marine living resources ke jo wahan par दूसरे तरह के रिसोर्सेज हैं उनको कैसे प्रिजर्व करना और तीसरा प्रोटोकॉल ऑन एनवायरमेंटल प्रोटेक्शन एंड नाउ टॉकिंग अबाउट द अपर हाउस राज्यसभा प्रोसीडिंग्स पर एडजर्न सेवरल टाइम्स अमिट प्रोटेस्ट बाय द ऑपोजिशन ऑन प्राइस राइज एंड अदर इश्यूज व्हेन द हाउस मेट फॉर द डे चेयरमैन एम वेंकैया नायडू रिजेक्टेड द एडजर्नमेंट नोटिसेस गिवन बाय द ऑपोजिशन मेंबर्स ओवर द इशू ऑफ प्राइस राइज एंड जीएसटी हाइक अमिट नॉइजी सीन्स द हाउस वाज एडजर्न टिल 12 नून When the house assembled at 12 noon Rajya Sabha deputy chairman Hari Vansh urged the protesting members to return to their respective seats 
Leader of the House Piyush Goel reiterated that the government is ready for discussion once the finance minister recovers from the COVID. आप जब 267 और 176 का फर्क तो जानते ही हैं। ये चेयरमैन साहब ने इस पर निष्पक्षक दे दिया है। उसमें मैं कुछ नहीं कर सकता। उनका पालन हो रहा है। सरकार चर्चा चाहती है। हमारे वित्त मंत्री को कोविड हुआ है। आप दोनों चर्चा चाहते हैं तो आप क्या कर लीजिए? चेयरमैन साहब ने कहा है पक्ष भी पक्ष the Rajya Sabha also took up discussion over a private member bill, namely the Right to Health Bill 2021. It aims to provide for health as a fundamental right to all citizens. RJD Mender Professor Manoj Jha moved the legislation. Moving on, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has appealed to the people to strengthen the Har Ghar Tiranga movement as the nation celebrates Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav. In a series of tweets, Prime Minister Modi urged the people to hoist or display the national flag in their homes between 13th and 14th of August. He said that the movement will deepen our connect with the tricolour. Noting that it was on 22nd July 1947 that the national flag was adopted, Prime Minister reiterated the commitment to fulfil the vision of freedom fighters and build the India of their dreams. The Central Board of Secondary Education announced results of Class 10th and 12th Board Examination. This year, the pass percentage for Class 12th stands at 92.71%. 33,432 candidates have scored above 95%, while 1,34,797 scored above 90%. Once again, the girls have outperformed the boys with a pass percentage of 94.54%. The pass percentage of boys is 91.25%. consistency or determination you have to study regularly, otherwise you have to target fix उसको फिनिश करके ही मैं सोती थी जब तक वो फिनिश नहीं हो जाता था तब तक मैं नहीं सोती थी अब चाहे उसमें कितना भी टाइम लग जाए और जल्दी हो जाए तो भी गर्ल्स ऑलवेज वर्क हार्ड देन बॉयज इस दिस टाइम अगर हमें कॉलेजेस भी चाहिए तो उसके लिए एग्जाम्स क्रैक करने हैं तो मेन मोटिव तो हमेशा कॉम्पिटिटिव ही रहा है तो दिस टाइम नीट अच्छा लग रहा है एंड लाइक माय एफर्ट्स केम लाइक ट्रू एंड द थिंग इज दैट मैं अपने जूनियर्स को बोलना चाहूंगी कि आप लोग क्या करें कि you should maintain a balance in all the subjects. बहुत खुश थे जैसे मैंने देखा तो दो सब्जेक्ट्स में हंड्रेड थे मैथ्स और अकाउंट्स में तो रेस्ट इस हिस्ट्री उसी में ही देखके बहुत ज़्यादा मैं खुश हो गई थी। I really worked very hard, literally very hard. खुश बहुत हुए। My mother was very happy. In class ten, the pass percentage stood at ninety four point four percent. While the pass percentage of girls stood at ninety five point two one, that of boys and transgender candidates was 93.8. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has congratulated all the students who have passed the examination. He urged the students to follow their inner calling. Speaking about those not happy about their results, he said that one exam will never define who they are. Now let's trace the monsoon in the nation. In Madhya Pradesh, Narmada River is in spate after heavy rains in the last 24 hours. Many areas in the Dindori have been submerged. Home Guard personnel have been deployed around the Ghat and the bridge to ensure safety and security. The Meteorological Department in Rajasthan has issued orange alert amid the forecast of heavy rains in many districts of the state. Sri Ganganagar and Hanumangar districts could experience severe rainfall in the next 24 hours. Jaipur and Kota districts are also under alert. And now talking about National Film Awards, Tamil film Surarai Potru has won big at the 68th National Film Awards. 
The film bagged the National Award for Best Feature, Best Actor for Surya and Best Actress for Aparna Balamurali. Ajay Devgan shared the Best Actor Award with Surya for Tana Ji, the Unsung Warrior. The film also won the Best Popular Film Providing Wholesome Entertainment and Best Costume Designer for Nachiket Barve and Mahesh Sherla. The late Malayalam filmmaker Sachina Nandan K.R. was posthumously named Best Director for Aya, Ayapur, Ayapunam Koshyam. The Best Hindi Film Prize went to Tulsi Das Jr. directed by Mridul Tulsi Das and produced by Ashutosh Govarikar Production. Best Actress is Surarai Potru, Actress Aparna Balamurli. Best Actor. Now that is a big award and that's also being shared with two people. Surya for Surarai Potru and Ajay Devgan for Tanaji's Unsung Warrior. Best Direction. It goes to Ayapanam Koshyam. Director is Sachidandan K.R. And now let's get you some stories we are tracking from across the nation. Lok Sabha Speaker Om Billa today visited Gurudwara Rakab Gan Sahib in Delhi and offered prayers on the occasion of Guru Harkishan Sahib Ji Prakash Purab. The Supreme Court today dismissed a petition that sought amendment in guidelines for raising the legal age of smoking from 18 to 21 years. The Enforcement Directorate has attached assets worth Rs 253.62 crore of fugitive Nirav Modi. The assets included gems, jewellery and bank deposits. Haryana Cabinet has decided to recruit 2,000 special police officers to overcome the shortage of policemen. BJP MLA Joshua D'Souza has been elected Deputy Speaker of Goa Legislative Assembly. In this monsoon session, 24 MLAs voted in favour of D'Souza, while 12 members voted for Congress candidate Delilia Lobo. Moving on, Amarnath Yatra from Jammu has been halted again due to bad weather and bad condition of Jammu Srinagar National Highway. This decision is taken as a precautionary measure after landslides and many places in Ramban. A third case of monkeypox has been reported from Kerala. A 35-year-old man who had come to Kerala from the UAE on 6 July has tested positive for the virus. Kerala Health Minister Veena George said the patient was undergoing treatment and his health condition is stable. His close contacts are being closely monitored. News from the world of business and economy now. Signaling strong bilateral trade between India and UAE, the government said nearly 15% of gems and jewellery exported from India find a market in the UAE. Gold exports to the Gulf nation recorded a 62% growth in May and 59% in June this year. Akasa Air will begin operations by launching its first flight on 7th of August on the Ahmedabad-Mumbai route. It has promised passengers softer seat cushions spacious legroom and USB ports in aircraft cabins. The airlines will expand to other sectors in a phased manner. Pakistan stocks are the worst performing in Asia and its dollar bonds and rupee are hitting new lows. The Pakistani rupee now is at an all-time low of 228 Pakistani rupees against the dollar. Although the IMF has agreed to disburse $1.2 billion bailout package, it is still awaiting final approval. A strong performance by the banking and financial sector saw the BSC Sensex gain 390 points, while NSC also gained 114 points. Ultratech Cement, HDFC, HDFC Bank, Excess Bank and ICICI were among top gainers. Power and telecom stocks remained low. And now about the global markets. Markets across Asia and Europe settled in the green with Nikkei 225, Hang Seng, Taiwan all gaining around 1%. Nasdaq lost around 0.5%.
Moving on, the European Central Bank raised interest rates by more than expected on Thursday. It was the latest expression of concern among Western nations about runway inflation and its potential to trump economic growth. The European Central Bank raised interest rates on Thursday for the first time in 11 years by a larger than expected amount. It comes amid steps already taken by the US Federal Reserve and other major central banks to target high inflation. The move raises new questions about whether the rush to make credit more expensive will plunge major economies into recession. The ECB's surprise hike of half a percentage point for the 19 countries using the euro currency is expected to be followed by another increase in September, possibly of another half a point. Bank President Christine Lagarde had indicated a quarter point hike last month. The ECB is coming late to the party in its rate liftoff, a token of inflation that turned out to be higher and more stubborn than first expected and of the shakiest state of an economy heavily exposed to the war in Ukraine and a dependence on Russian oil and natural gas. Recession predictions have increased for later this year and next year, as soaring bills for electricity, fuel and gas deal, a blow to businesses and people spending power. Bureau Report, Sunset TV. Slipping into a short break here, coming up, drones will be flying alongside pilots in wars of the future. All this and much more after this short break, you stay tuned to Sunset TV. Welcome back after the break. You're watching the news and time now for all the big developments from the Russia-Ukraine war front. Russia and Ukraine signed separate agreements on Friday with Turkey and the United Nations on Friday. The agreements clear the way for exporting millions of tons of Ukrainian grain as well as Russian grain and fertilizer. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres has called the move a beck on on the Black Sea. Here are the details. Russia's Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu arrived in Istanbul on Friday. He is signing a key agreement that will end a standoff that has threatened world food security. It will allow Ukraine to resume its shipment of grain from the Black Sea to world markets and enable Russia to export grain and fertilizers. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres and Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan are overseeing the deal. Last week, the sides reached a tentative agreement on a UN plan that will enable Ukraine to export 22 million tons of grain and other agriculture products that have been stuck in Ukraine's Black Sea ports due to the war. The unblocking of the grain stockpiles will help ease a global food crisis that has sent prices of vital commodities like wheat and barley soaring. The deal will ensure a control center in Istanbul staffed by the UN, Turkish, Russian and Ukrainian officials to run and coordinate the process. Ships will be inspected to ensure that they are not carrying weapons. It also makes provision for the safe passage of the ships. Turkish media reports said the deal is expected to be signed by Shoigu and Ukraine's infrastructure minister Oleksandr Kubrikov. Bureau Report, Sunset TV. Continuing with the Russia-Ukraine news, three bodies were recovered from the rubble of a school destroyed by Russian shelling in the eastern Ukrainian city of Kramalyusk. Local officials said two schools in the eastern Donetsk region, one in Kramalyusk and another in Kastrentinivka, were hit on Thursday. Russia said that over 300 Ukrainian troops were killed in the strike on Kramalyusk school. The Ukrainian economy is likely to shrink by a third in 2022, as per the Ukrainian Central Bank. However, Governor of National Bank of Ukraine, Kyrylo Shevchenko, said that it could return to growth from 2023 to 2024 if the Black Sea ports reopen. He noted that the war had caused a sharp drop, sharp drop in economic activity in Ukrainian initially, but the economy has gradually recovered since April. Russia's defense ministry has said its forces have destroyed four U.S.-supplied HIMARS rocket systems between July 5 to 20. The claim comes just two days after the chairman of the U.S. Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Mark Milley, said none of the HIMARS systems supplied to Kiev by Washington had been eliminated. 
Russian-backed separatists in a breakaway region of eastern Ukraine have blocked access to the search engine Google. Denis Pushilin, head of the self-proclaimed Donetsk People Republic, has accused Google of promoting violence against all Russians and said that its handlers from the U.S. government were to blame. Time now for some other global updates. An ally of Rajapaksa political family, Guna Vardhani, is a veteran political leader and former foreign minister who is sworn in as Sri Lanka's prime minister. Earlier, security forces cleared the main protest site, occupied for months by demonstrators angry at the Rajapaksas over the country's economic collapse. More details in this report. New Sri Lankan President Ranil Vikram Singhe appointed his school classmate Dinesh Gunavardhana to succeed himself. 73-year-old Gunavardhana also belongs to a prominent political family. Sri Lankans have taken to the streets for months demanding their leaders resign over an economic crisis that has left the island nation's 22 million people short of essentials like medicine, food and fuel. The protests forced out former President Gotabaya Rajpaksa last week. Before dawn, Security forces made several arrests and cleared a protest camp near the presidential palace in capital, Colombo, where demonstrators have gathered for past 104 days. Army and police staff arrived in trucks and buses around midnight, removing tents and blocking roads leading to the site. The overnight raid occurred even though protesters had announced earlier that they would vacate the site on Friday voluntarily. Bureau report, Sunset TV. More news from across the globe now. North Korea warned the United States and South Korea to stop their military campaign against the North. North Korea views joint military exercises by US and South Korea as an invasion rehearsal. It also accused US and South Korea of driving the peninsula to brink of war. Police in Brazil conducted a huge raid at a criminal group in a residential complex. The group was one of the biggest gang that stole vehicles and cargo and robbed banks as well as invaded nearby neighborhoods. Nearly 400 police officers were involved. The Mercosur trade bloc countries Argentina, Brazil, Uruguay and Paraguay discussed opening the South American trade zone to China in their annual summit. The members have diverging views on China and its policies with Paraguay having no diplomatic relations with China on account of its ties with Taiwan. Argentina and Uruguay spoke in favour of bloc towards the trade with China as Beijing has always sought closer trade ties with raw materials with South America. And Tokyo is seeing a sudden rise in COVID-19 cases. New coronavirus infections in Tokyo hit a record of 31,878. It is the first time that the daily, daily tally surpassed 30,000 cases in the city. However, authorities have not called for the COVID-19 prevention measures to be implemented as nearby or nearly all residents already wear masks and take other precautions. Protesters marched in the Bolivian capital against the government for alleged allegedly persecuting opposition leaders during the pandemic. Protesters, including many social and civil organizations, including the Bolivian Medical Union, some neighborhood councils, business associations, police and military wives, among others. And could drones replace fighter pilots in future wars? Algorithms, data and machines are taking on a bigger role in the cockpit, but there's still a role for humans when it comes to fighter jets. Watch the F-35 fighter jets roars into action in this report. In the Top Gun movie sequel, an aging maverick played by Tom Cruise learns that the top secret hypersonic plane he's working on is being cancelled so the funding can be used for a drone program. The movie's premise follows a debate that's playing out for years in the real world. Can drone technology redefine the role of top guns? The pilots who man the machines? The Farnborough International Air Show provides some answers. On display are F-35 fighter jets, built as the most advanced combat aircraft in the world. Built by Lockheed Martin, 
they have a top speed of Mach 1.6. Advanced sensors to track enemy targets and jam radars and carry precision guided missiles. The jets can share the data in the air with control centers on the ground. At the cutting edge of technology, in some cases, machines have totally gotten rid of the pilot altogether. Drones are being used extensively in the war between Russia and Ukraine and other modern conflicts. Technology has already removed the need for a second person to sit in the back seat to work the radar. And although experts say it is too soon to write an epitaph for the pilot, there is a next generation of fighter jets in the concept stages that offer pilotless versions. However, they won't arrive before the next decade at the earliest. The US is also looking at incorporating artificial intelligence into war fighting, including designing a plane that can fly itself in a dogfight. But in the near future, air warfare is likely to be human pilots and drone machines working together, which would mean pilots aren't going to be grounded after all. But the next wingman could certainly be a drone. Bureau Report, Sunset TV. And from all the roaring action of F-35 fighter jet plates and now time for all the sporting action. Neela Chopra has qualified for the final of the javelin throw competition in the World Athletics Championships with an effort of 88.39 meters. Chopra qualified with his first throw. India's Rohit Yadav has also qualified for the final round of men's javelin competition. Rohit's best throw of 80.42 put him at 11th place among 12 who would be competing in the final round. American Noah Lyles ran the third fastest time of 19.31 seconds to win the 200 meters gold at the World Athletics Championships. Lyles broke Michael Johnson's US record of 19.32 seconds created at 1996 Olympics. Jamaica's Sherika Jackson outgunned compatriot Shelley and Fraser Price to win the women's 200 meter gold at the World Athletic Championships. Jackson set a championship record of 21.45 seconds, the second fastest time ever run over the distance. Eldhorst Paul became the first Indian to qualify for the triple jump final at the World Championships with an effort of 16.68 meters in Eugene, Oregon. He finished sixth in Group A qualification round and 12th overall. And that's a wrap of today's bulletin. Thank you for watching. For more updates, keep watching Sunset TV. Good night. Namaskar.